trying to get it together. Amen. Can you hear me now? It's clear, but it's much better. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's perfect. Good. All right, praise God. All right. If I mute the phone, can you still hear me? Hold on a minute. I don't hear anything right now. Okay, praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Sister Howard, can you hear me out there? Amen. Okay, this is pretty loud. I'm going to see now, Pastor. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. Evangelist Murphy. Um, I'm trying to see if somebody can hear me out there. Or do I need to turn up the volume or find the volume? I can hear you loud and clear. Amen. Amen. Uh, what about on Facebook Live? Can y'all hear me out there? Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can hear me. All right. Oh, we're probably going to wait just a few minutes while others are getting on. Amen. I pray that everyone had a safe day and a joyful day. It was a beautiful day, that's for sure, with the weather. Amen. First lady says she can hear me. Amen. All right, then we are going to get get started with a word of prayer. And Father God, we thank you for your loving kindness on this day. And truly, this is the day that you have made. And we're thankful to be able to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your presence being with us on on this day, all day long, you you watched over your people. You kept us from all danger, seen and and unseen. Amen. And we appreciate that, and we're grateful for that. So many things were going on today. Lord, somebody lost their life today. Oh God, right there at the Motel Six. God, some somebody lost their life. But God, you watched over us, and you brought us to our prospective places, our homes. Oh God, safely. And so now we're we're on the Bible study on tonight, oh God. We ask that you would just we ask that you would word my mouth, oh God. That you would do what you always do is hide me behind the cross and let the people see and hear you. Uh, let the word go forth that's revelant in our eyes, our, our lives on tonight, oh God. Um, let something impact our life from the word of God on tonight, oh God. And we will give your name to praise. We will give your name the honor. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, Zion Church family. God bless each and every one of you that are logging on on tonight. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Tonight, 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 I want to talk about a very special subject. I want to talk about um, the dangers of being double-minded. Uh, I don't know uh, who this word is for. It's for me first and foremost, foremost, I believe, but hopefully it will help somebody else on tonight. Amen? Uh, the dangers of being double-minded. Let's go to the book of 
James, God bless you all, uh, pastors. Amen. That a blog on Pastor Shepherd. I saw you on there. Amen. Um, all the evangelists, all the ministers, and everyone in their prospective places. Amen. Zion Church family, God bless you. And any visitors that might join us on tonight, God bless you. Amen. Uh, let's go to James chapter number one. Let's go to James chapter number one. Hallelujah. And I'm going to. I'm going to be reading, amen, um, verses, I'm just going to read, I'm just going to read a little bit, amen, is that all right? Um, James chapter number one, James, a servant, he, he, he identifies himself as a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations. Uh, I want you to really look at that. He says this letter he's writing is to the 12 tribes. That means he's talking to, to, to baptized believers. He's talking to church folk. Um, this letter is addressed to church folks. Uh, greetings. Consider, uh, verse 2, consider it pure joy, uh, my brothers and sisters, Whenever you face trials of uh, many kinds, because you know that the testing, and I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible, uh, he says, the testing of your faith produce um, uh -huh, endurance or perseverance. Let us persevere, finishing, uh, finish its work. Um, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lack wisdom, you should who ask God, who gives generously to all without finding uh, fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, did you hear that? Here we go. When you ask, he says here, I need you to ask. When you ask, <clears throat> you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect Watch this. He says that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double minded and unstable in all they do. Amen. So that was verse one to verse eight. Uh, James talking here. James, the author of this letter this epistle to the church. Um, I, I want to read just verse 8. I want to read that in the King James Version and also in the Amplified Version for just a little better understanding. It's just the Pastor Shelton. God bless you on tonight. Um, it says, James, uh, verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, the Amplified Bible says, being a double-minded man, unstable and restless in all his ways, in everything he thinks, feels, or decides. We're going to talk tonight about the dangers of being double-minded. Amen. Can I get someone to write that in the chat? Amen. The danger of being double-minded. Uh, who wrote this book? James writes this book, uh, this Ephesus uh, epistle. Uh, James, uh, he's, he, he identifies himself as the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, traditionally, uh, it has been held that James, um, like Jude, is one of the sons of Joseph and Mary, uh, and hence the half-brother of Jesus Christ. Um, 
among the apostles with Peter and John, and they were privileged to eyewitness accounts of, of different things that Jesus did. James uh, was there uh, during the time of the transfiguration. Now, this is not the James who wrote the book. This is the apostle James. Uh, this is not the half-brother of Jesus who died at the sword, but this is 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 the one of the brothers of uh, 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 what, what was his name? Uh, um, the brothers of thunder. Hey, Amen. They called him the brothers of of, of thunder. Um, but this 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 James that that wrote this book, and that's who I want to talk about. This James that wrote this book. He's writing to the he's writing to the twelve tribes of Israel. He's writing to believers. He's writing to the nation of, um, of Israel, um, and he's talking about being double minded. He's talking about something that I'm familiar with. Amen. Uh, when it comes to making decisions and 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 doing one thing and turn around and then doing another thing and. Uh, basically being uncertain about the decisions that you make. Um, he, he talks a little more later on. We find out he talks about uh, how you count it all joy when you fall into dive of temptations. Uh, not only does he talk about that, but he also talks about how uh, important it is to count it all joy when, when things happen to you uh, when the when life shows up or the unexpected things in life show up unexpectedly and, and kind of unsettle us, knock us off our off our horse, as I would always say. Um, he's talking about um, when when you have a problem or something happens in your life that that you still should have joy and and I find that hard sometimes to understand. Thank you. I find that hard sometimes to understand how you can have joy uh, when you just lost a family member or how you can have joy when uh, the boss just laid you off of your job and the family is depending on you. Uh, I find it hard to understand how you can have joy when, when your so-called friends uh, turn their backs and walk out on you. Or, or if you have a need and no one is willing to help you, uh, it's hard to have joy. And and I can want, I can just imagine right now uh, after this pandemic or or during COVID nineteen that so many people who had their trust in God had to go through a uh, process of losing folks, had to go through process of losing homes and jobs and and even their health, uh, but they still had to worship and praise God. Um, uh, I think it was David who said, count it, uh, I, I will bless the Lord at, at all times and his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. I don't know about you, um, but but I, I cannot be just a little transparent. I find it hard to have joy uh, when I'm seeing people suffering. I find it hard to have joy when, when I see people getting mistreated and I find it hard to have joy uh, uh, when people lie on you and talk about you and, and, and don't respect you or, or even respect your position. I, I find it hard to have joy. But I, I guess what, what this joy that James is talking about is not the joy uh, that's brought about by materialistic things. I think this joy that he's talking about is 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 kind of like what we always say in the church this joy that i have the world didn't give it to me <laughs> and the world certainly can't take it away um i believe it's the joy uh that that's talked about in the bible where he says it's the joy of the lord that is my strength the reason why i have not uh clocked nobody in the head the reason why i haven't uh uh just went totally off on anybody and how I'm able to humble myself even uh, through the talk, being talked about or being disrespected or being uh, forgotten or, or misused. Uh, but, but, but because I have joy, I have joy in spite of my circumstances. I have joy in spite of my situation. I have joy in spite of what people do because it's the joy of the Lord that's my strength. And I get strength from him 
uh, when I find myself in situations. Amen. So, so, but we want to talk tonight simply about um, this double mindedness. Amen. Uh, uh, he talks. He talks about uh, having a sound mind. Uh, I want to run over to uh, I think it's it's First Timothy or Second Timothy where he talks about having uh, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So either you got a sound mind or you got a you got a double mind. And, and it's just my belief. It's just my belief that the only way that you can truly have, uh, watch this, the only way that you can really truly have uh, a sound mind is you got to have sound doctrine. Can I say that again? I believe that it takes sound doctrine in order to produce a sound mind. Um, if you don't have firm and foundational teaching, if you don't have the type of teaching that will help you have joy in the midst of your sorrows and your storms, amen, then you will fall apart, even as a believer, even being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You will let your emotions and your anger get the best of you. But because I got sound teaching, I got sound doctrine, then, then I can have a sound mind. I can make decisions based on the word of God and, and not based on my own uh, uh, self. Uh, uh, and, and I know me. I know me. I know my desires. I know, hallelujah, my background. I know where I came from. And I know that all the things that I had materialistically. So I, I know, I know me. Amen. But in the midst of knowing me, I have learned that I'd rather have Jesus <laughs> and peace didn't have all the materialistic things in the world. And, and the reason I say that is because these things, according to the word of God, are going to perish. They're going to go away. But 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 you got to have something to hold on to when you see that day, and it's approaching, when when the world is really going to go crazy, go nuts. Amen. And 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 But you got to have something to hold on to. And I believe that what we have to hold on to is the word of God. I believe that we got to hold on to this word like our lives depended on it. Amen. So we have to have sound doctrine. Uh, it's time out. It's time out for prosperity teaching. It's time out for for all this other stuff that we like to teach about philosophy. <laughs> uh, it's time out for all of the, the poems and all of this stuff that, 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 that we do. Uh, 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 preach me happy. Uh, pastor, preach me happy preacher. Amen. It's time out for all of that because uh, your tests and your trials are real. Your tests and your trials are real. Amen. Affliction is real. Sorrow is real. Grief is real. All of these things, hallelujah, that come to try our faith are real. Spiritual warfare is is real. Amen. And you're going to need a sound mind. Amen. To deal with spiritual things, spiritual warfare. Amen. You're going to need a sound mind just to deal with, with people. And I would go as far as say you're going to need a sound mind to deal with church people. <laughs> Yeah, well, praise, praise God. God. You're going to need a sound mind to deal with your, your so-called friends and, and your co-workers. You're going to need a sound mind in these last days, hallelujah, to deal with the supervisor on the job. You're going to need a sound mind to deal with, with the things that the devil sends after you, hallelujah, to distract you, hallelujah, to get you off track, to derail you, to get you in your flesh. You're going to need a sound mind. And you're only going to get a sound mind. It's only produced, hallelujah. Somebody ought to write that down. A sound mind is produced by sound doctrine. Amen. You, you got to really learn what it means to have faith faith in God. You have to really learn what it means to trust God. Hallelujah. In spite of your circumstances, your, your situation, the storms, what life throws your way. Hallelujah. What your wife do or what your children do. Hallelujah. What your, what your, your best friend does to you. Amen. You're going to have to have a sound mind in these last days. 
And, 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 and when we look, I want to pull this up because I want to read this out of the King James Version of the Bible. So, so let me get this right quick. Amen. On my tablet. I want to read this instead of my Bible. I want to read this out of, out of this because I want us to see something here. Amen. Amen. That, that, that I think is, is important. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. James chapter number one. And, and we're going to start at verse number, uh, eight. Okay. So, so, so let, let us, let us go back up a little further. Um, let me get out this amplified and get to the King James version of it. Amen. Here we go. All right. So let us go up here and uh, where he talks about this in in verse number five. He says, if any of you lack what wisdom. Now, we know the Bible talks about wisdom. My, my, my definition of wisdom is uh, basically life experiences, things that you have experienced. Uh, some people, you know, you, you can talk to them and tell them, you know, don't touch the, 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 the eye on the fire uh, uh, because it's going to burn you. And, and then other people, <laughs> you can tell them that and they'll receive it because, you know, I experienced it. I know it's going to burn. But some people got to touch it anyway to find out for themselves if, if it's going to burn. But he tells us here when it comes to wisdom, he says wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. Is that right? I believe that's in the book of Proverbs. He says, get wisdom. But in all of your getting, get what? An understanding. So, so, so what I think he's saying here, if any of you lack wisdom, he says, let him ask of God because God is the only one that I know that can give you a clear understanding. When you have to make a decision, amen, especially when you're standing before the preacher about to get married, amen, you should have an understanding. <laughs> Whoa, that Coca-Cola bottle going to disappear, amen. All that beauty is going to fade, amen. Hallelujah, all the muscles is going to go going to collapse. Amen. Instead of a six pack, he's going to have a 24 pack. Amen. All of that that you're looking at when you're standing there to get married to that individual will not be there in the years to come. And so you need a good understanding, hallelujah, that things change. Amen. So, so when we look at, at this, he says, if, if any of you lack wisdom, uh-huh, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and unbraid it, uh, unbraid it not. And if it shall be given him, but let him ask in what faith. And this is what I wanted to get to. Let him ask in what faith. Now, not nothing wavering. Anybody got a definition for that word wavering? Amen. Not wavering. He, he says here, he says here, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the winds and tossed. Amen. Now, now I know, I know we, we, we want everybody to believe. Here it is. We want everybody to believe that whenever you see me, I'm all right. When I say praise the Lord, uh, I'm all right. When you ask me how I'm doing, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Amen. But the devil is a lie. <laughs> if we would just be transparent and tell the truth and just say, you know, I'm struggling today. You know, I, I'm really going through today. You know, I just don't feel good in my body today. If we would just tell the truth, amen, because the truth can set you free. The truth will make you free. If you tell the truth, then we know what to pray for, because I'm going to pray for you anyway, because I can see through a whole lot of folks. I can see that something's wrong. Something ain't right. Amen. That reminds me, hallelujah, when, when the Shudamite woman came to the prophet, amen, and, and the prophet looked at her and he said, something's wrong. God hid this from me. Something's wrong. So, so I believe leaders have that, that, that discernment to be able to look through you and see that there is a problem. The problem is we don't want to, we don't want 
want to come clean and say, you know, I need help. My rent's due, my mortgage's due, uh, the, the job is talking about closing, whatever the case may be. We're not always fine. Amen. Now we can talk it in faith and believe that everything is going to be all right. I, I do that sometimes myself. Amen. The Bible calls it calling those things that be not as though they, they were already. I can, I can go ahead and, and, and speak myself happy, but the reality is I'm struggling. I'm struggling in my marriage. I'm, I'm struggling with my relationship with my children. Amen. It seems the, the more I do for them, the, the less they appreciate me. Amen. The more I do for them, the less they say thank you. Amen. They got this expectancy problem. They got this entitlement problem. So, so everybody's going through something. Every, everybody's got an issue that they were going through. Amen. And if it wasn't true, then, then if it's not true, then I think he, we never would have got the scripture out of the Bible says that to, 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 to cast all your cares uh, uh, upon me for I what care it for you. So so I think if we learn how to be honest and just say, you know, today I'm a little wavy today. I'm, I'm a little up and down and, and I'm going through some things. It, it will kind of help the, the person that you're talking to or or those that you are around. It'll kind of help them to understand that that I can pray for you right now. Amen. So, so we, we, we find out. In, 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 in the word of God, in James, in chapter number uh, one, verse number six, he says, but let him ask it in faith, uh, nothing wavering. For he that waver is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And he says, this is the consequence of that. This is the consequence when you don't come true uh, or, or, or you don't really expound on what your situation is or what you're going through. He says, well, let, that, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A devil-minded man is unstable, watch this, in all his ways. He's he not some of his ways, but but all of his ways. And and and, and I really believe, hallelujah, that there are consequences. I believe that there are consequences when we are in that uh, unstable mindset or or frame of mind, I believe that 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 God wants us, as the Bible says, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, all of your ways, a l l, all of your ways. God God is care, he he is concerned about every particular. Uh, a detail of our lives. Amen. If your toe hurt, God is concerned about it. If you if you if you're losing your hair, God is concerned about that. Amen. Amen. So so if you can't sleep at night, God is concerned about that. I had I had a sister tell me, she said, I just can't sleep. And I'm sitting here going, I'm trying to sleep too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because I can't sleep either. But it's in the times that I can't sleep. I got to I got to talk to God. Amen. Ain't no sense of me worrying about anything. Ain't no sense of me worrying about what I cannot control. Ain't no sense of me worrying about what I cannot change. So I might as well use that time that I'm laying there, can't sleep, to talk to God. Why? Because God has a solution to every problem in my life. And if I lay still long enough mm, and clear my mind long enough, hallelujah, I will, I will hear the antidote. I will hear the cure. I will hear the instructions on how to take care of that problem because God don't waste no time. We ain't got no time to waste. So if you're laying there in the midnight hour and you can't sleep, speak to God about some things. Tell him all about your problems. He, he want to hear about it. Amen. He already knows about it, but he wants you to have a conversation. Did you hear what I just said? He wants you to have a conversation with him. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. He, he wants you to have a conversation with him. And, and I had to learn this, hallelujah, the hard way because I would lay there and I would toss. I couldn't sleep. I would get up. I'd go to the refrigerator. I'd do all these other things. Hallelujah. I'd go turn on the TV. i try to watch a movie. i try to fall asleep. Uh, 
everything and I couldn't sleep. And then I noticed that, that I just needed to go ahead and tell God about my situation. And God allowed me to sleep. Amen, somebody. So, so, so we find out that when, when we're wavering, uh, it has consequences. Being double-minded can be a dangerous thing for the believer. The Bible talks about when we ask God for things, we should ask him in faith, believing that we, watch this, already have what we ask for. And I know that's hard sometimes because some things are, are hard and, and we're believing we're believing God for it. Amen. We're believing God for it. But it just it's just that little seed of doubt. That's that little seed of concern. Will God really turn this situation around? Will God really bring me out of this situation? And then the question always up there, how long am I going to be in this situation? How long is this test going to last? Because uh, we like to call every thing a test. How long is this test going to last? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but 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 I, I, I don't like tests. I, I didn't like tests in school. I don't like tests in the spiritual realm. I don't like tests. I don't do good with tests. Amen, somebody. Can somebody out there be transparent with me and say, me too, Pastor. I do not do well with tests. Hallelujah. Because tests especially when I was in school, they, 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 they would do what they call a pop quiz. They would just drop it on you out of the blue. You were not prepared for it. They didn't expect you. They expect you to know it, but you weren't prepared for it. You came in in the morning, put your stuff on the table, and they said, put the books away. We're having a pop quiz this morning. We're having a test on, on such and such and such. And I would sit there and just like, God have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's the same way in the spiritual realm. When God puts us, uh, and I know people say, well, God don't test us. So I won't say that. God, God don't test us. But, but, but God, hallelujah, he, he does pop quizzes. Every now and then he'll quiz us on something. <laughs> he, 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 he will drop something on us and then he wants to see if we're going to have the proper response. If we're going to still praise him if we're going to still seek his face or, 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 or we're going to run from the situation and hide. Amen. Somewhere or we're going to, we're going to leave the church. Amen. I think there's a lot of testing. Okay. I said I wouldn't use tests. There's a lot of pop quizzes in the house of God. Amen. I think that, that, that God drops a pop quiz on folks who 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 are out there giving God their best praise. And God said, oh, that's great. That's great. Now, let me see will you praise me if I snatch the rug from up under your feet. Let me see if you'll praise me if I touch your body with affliction. Will, will you still praise me with that enthusiasm? Will you, will you still lift me up? Hallelujah. When you don't have a dime in the bank. Hallelujah. And your social security check is late. Hallelujah. Will you still give me the praise? Hallelujah. When you find out, God help us tonight. Huh, you, you find out that the doctor has sent you a terrible diagnosis. Will you still praise me? So there's pop quizzes. I believe that God drops in in the church on us all the time in the life of the believer. Amen. That's why he tells us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because these tests are going to come to try to get you to stop what God has called you to do. And a lot of people are falling victim to things that the devil is putting in their lives. Come on, somebody. That, that he's putting in their lives. And God is saying, listen, if you just handle this, this pop quiz, if you, if you just push or press your way through this, this, amen. And the grass will be greener on the other side. The sun is going to shine on tomorrow. If you can just hold on to midnight, amen. Something about midnight. If you can hold on to midnight, amen, and not lose hope, not give up, not throw in the towel, not turn your back and walk out. If you can just hold on through midnight, joy is going to come in the morning. James said, count it all joy.
<laughs> he said, count it all joy when you fall into diver temptation. Not if you fall into something, but when you fall into something. Because we all got to go through something. Because the trial of our faith is, is, is going to happen. It's got to happen in order for it to produce some endurance in order for it to produce some patience. Amen. I don't know about you, but Elder Howard used to say, don't ask God for patience. When you ask God for patience, you're asking him for trouble. So I learned not to ask God for patience. But when I get in a situation, I say, Lord, help me, help me, Jesus. Just help me make it through this. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, Lord. <laughs> I remind him of his own word. Weeping may, you said it, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. It won't always be like this. I'm being confident of this one thing that God is able. Hallelujah. He's able to bring me out. He's able to fix the situation. He's able to heal my body. He's able to give me the finances I need to take care of my house and my children and my wife. He's able to give me everything that I need. But I got to learn, church, hallelujah, of the living God. You got to learn how to hold on to God in the midst of whatever you may go through. Amen. He says here, he says here, he says in verse number, number uh, 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 six, but let him ask in faith. Uh, that reminds me, that reminds me of, 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 of who was it? Uh, uh, Jairus, when he came and he wanted Jesus to heal uh, his daughter who who was sick amen the bible says that 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 he 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 was going through such a bad time that jesus said okay if you have faith amen he said yes yeah, he said if you believe he said yeah 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 i believe but lord help my unbelief and, and that's that's got to be our mentality that's got to be our attitude because i know we think we have faith amen but there are things out there that will make you understand that you don't have the faith that you think you have. Amen. And it's in those times that you got to be like, like Jared and say, Lord, help my unbelief. Help me to believe that you're going to break the chains off of my life. Help me to believe that my marriage is going to come back together and we're going to be joyful and happy in one house. Help me to believe that you're able to touch and speak to my situation, oh God, and turn it around. Uh, Deacon Allen would sing that song every time I, 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 I turn around. The Lord is making a way for me. Amen. So you got to have that mentality you got to have that attitude. You got to have, hallelujah, the mindset that no matter what I'm going through, did you hear me out there? No matter what we go through, God has the ability. He has the power. He has the know-how to turn our situations around. He says, acts in faith, not wavering. Uh huh. Like a, a like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Uh huh. For let that let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double minded. I keep reading this because I want you to get an understanding. Hallelujah. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let that man know that he will not receive anything of the Lord. Listen, I've learned, I've learned, and it didn't come easy. I've learned that when I pray and ask God about a situation, amen, I leave it alone. Lord, I asked you if it's your will, and that's important. If it's your will, then it shall come to pass. And we have to learn how to pray his will and not our desire. We have to learn how to pray for him, hallelujah, to be in charge of the situation and not me put my hands on it. Amen, somebody. I come to tell you tonight, church of the living God, a Zion church in Jesus Christ, you have to have such a prayer life that when you get up off your knees, you already believe that God has fixed 
your situation. God has healed the person. God has healed your body. God has paid the mortgage. God has got the application through and the job is yours. You have to walk away from that prayer believing and you might as well start celebrating. What believing it tells me to do is celebrate in advance. Yeah, I don't see it because that's faith. We don't see it. That's right. We, we All we know is that we ask for it and he said if a man's ways please him you got to remind God of his word. If a man way please him he will Will give him the desires of his heart, but those desires of your heart has to line up with God's will for your life. God will not give you anything, hallelujah, that's going to derail you. He's not going to give you anything that's going to take you out of the pattern or, 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 the, or, or the road, hallelujah, to destiny and purpose. He's not going to do that. That's the enemy's job to do that. God is not going to do that. God wants us, hallelujah, to use the word of God and let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Come on, somebody. I know that God, hallelujah, has nothing but the best for his people. And if we just believe that, then there is nothing, nothing, nothing. He called it light affliction. I just heard him say it. That's, that, that thing that you're going through right now, whoever I'm talking to, God said that's just a light affliction that's only lasting but a moment, but God got his hands on it. He's turning it. He's twisting it. He's pulling on it. God help me right there. And before you know it, hallelujah, it's going to work. Hallelujah for your good. God's going to get glory. I didn't believe that a long time ago. I didn't believe that God can get glory out of my sickness. I didn't believe that God can get glory out of my depression. I didn't believe that God can get glory out of my pain and my anger. Hallelujah. But God has a way of, 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 of oh God, help me with that one, of taking glory out of your situation. Why? Because he's looking for glory. He wants the glory. He wants all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, so we have to learn, people of God, hallelujah, to not look at our circumstance, not look at our situation, but look unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. If we're going to get anything from God, from God, we have to learn how to look at him and take our eyes off the situation. They told me today at work, they say, they say, sir, they call me on the phone. They say, sir, you, 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 you passed up uh, uh, Del Paso light rail station. Uh, uh, you didn't stop there. I said, oh yes, I did. I stopped there. I picked up two people. And when I got back to the office, I went in there to let them know. Hey, I didn't. I, I, I stopped there. I got the two people. They say you want to see the film. <laughs> ah, Lord, help me, help me. He said you did not stop there. We got frame by frame by frame showing you. You went right past Del Paso Light Rail Station and you went on to your route. You did not stop there. Listen, I had a senior moment. Sometimes, Hallelujah, we have senior moments and we try to do stuff ourselves and we forget that we have a God that is capable. We have a God that has the power. We have a God that can fix and turn things around in our lives. Hallelujah. I said that to say sometimes we're not thinking clearly. I could have swore I went by there. But you know what? I was weary. I was tired. Hallelujah. So I thought in my mind that I went by there, but the tape showed the proof because a picture cannot lie that I did not stop there. Lord have mercy. Had to repent. Had to had to laugh with the lady at the desk. She said, I told you, you didn't stop there. I said, Lord Jesus. But the, the Bible tells us, hallelujah, uh, not to grow weary. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 but we're getting weary. I believe the church the church people are, or, the, or the church folks are getting tired. I believe that 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 that, that we 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 need something something different. I think this is God talking right now. I, I, I think 
think, I think we need to get out of the walls and, and get into the community. Amen. And see God transform people's lives. I, I think that, that we got shouting down perfectly. I think that we got praising down and worshiping down and praying for folks down. I think we've got all the training that we need. I think we need to go out into the highways and to the hedges and then compel men to come in that God's house might be filled. God's house will never be filled until he gets some laborers to go out. Say that again. To, until he gets you all to understand that you can go out. Hallelujah. And help people's lives be transformed. People, all, everybody don't want to be homeless. Everybody don't want to be on drugs. Everybody don't want to be a homosexual. Everybody don't want to be angry. Everybody don't want to be a drunkard. Amen. We, we, we put labels on people and say, well, they'll never change. They'll always be like that. The devil is a lie. You change. I change. They can change. They don't have to be a prison number. I was a prison number, but they don't have to be a prison number. Our children don't have to be shooting each other and killing each other and disrespecting their parents. They don't have to do that. If we would just let the light from heaven shine in the dark community that we are, we are surrounded by. Hey man, I believe that God can change Del Paso Heights. God can change North Highlands. God can change Amen, Roseville. And God can change even Granite Bay. God can, God can change Rancho Cordova. I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is not bound. And if we're not bound and we let God lead and guide us, I believe, hallelujah, that the apostolic message, hallelujah, the apostolic doctrine, amen, the baptism in Jesus' name can go outside the doors and, and the walls of Zion Church and Jesus Christ and infect a whole community, amen, somebody, but we're double-minded, we don't mind just sitting in the house, we don't mind just giving God a pity pat praise, we don't mind listening to somebody's testimony, amen, okay, praise the Lord, and don't even celebrate with them, amen, but we got to do better, we got to do a whole lot better. And hallelujah. If God don't get glory, hallelujah, he going to get glory out of you walking out of the church into the community and touching somebody's life. Come on, somebody. We're his hands and, and we're his feet. Amen. We're his mouthpiece. Uh, if God's going to transform the world, he said the disciples turned the world upside down with their doctrine. If he's going to change the world uh, or our surroundings, it's got to be us. That's that's why we come to church. We're coming to church to be trained to go out as soldiers in the battlefield to let people know, hallelujah, that we serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, hallelujah, that we can even imagine or think by the power that working in who? Us. He's using us. Us that got the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power. Power for what? To go out to the community. To go out, hallelujah, let people know that Jesus is the light of the world. Amen, somebody. I can't get no help tonight. Somebody write in the chat for me right quick. We got to go out. We, we got to get out of the walls. I feel like, hallelujah, if we don't, hallelujah, there are going to be consequences. I feel like we're missing out on a blessing and helping other folks to be blessed. Amen. So he says a double-minded man will receive nothing of the Lord. Oh, my God. Amen. I believe, I believe that fear also, hallelujah, is a form of being double-minded. I believe that a lot of times the reason why we haven't got out there is because we're afraid. We're in the comfort zone. We got the, we got the uh, organ. We got the drums. We got the microphones. Hallelujah. We got the praise team ushering in the spirit of God. Amen. And then we got, hallelujah, our mouths. <laughs> and we're praising God. And we're we're satisfied, but I'm not satisfied. Oh, no. I see beyond the walls. Amen, somebody. Somebody write in the chat. In the chat you got to see beyond the walls. Amen. There, there, there's something else out there that God wants us to do. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I want to give God glory. Out of, I want him to get the glory out of my life and out of what I do for him. But the Bible says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. 
Uh, he hasn't given us fear. The Bible talks about fear as being torment. Amen. He, he hasn't given us fear. Amen. That's from the devil. Hallelujah. Fear is from the devil. Just like unbelief is from the devil. Amen. And being double-minded is from the devil. Amen. Let me just put that in there. Amen. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There's spiritual things that are happening. This is spiritual warfare. He says, but of power and of love. And there that word is again, a sound mind. And you find that in 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 7. Amen. Fear will cause you to doubt the instructions of God. The leading, leading of God, Amen, Hallelujah. It, 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 it will, it'll cause you to stop, uh, 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 not to, not to operate in the discernment of God, Amen. Fear has 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 crept into the church, I believe, Amen. And we're so afraid, Hallelujah, to to go out and do what God has called us to do. Now let's look at some consequences, and I'm gonna let you go, Amen. Because I told you that this thing is entitled. We got we got ten minutes. All right, that's all I need. He says, now now let us look at some consequences. So you remember Ahab uh, 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 when he sent unto the children of Israel, Hallelujah, when he met Elijah up there on Mount Carmel. Amen. And Elijah came unto him and the people and said, how long will you be between two opinions? Uh, 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 if God be God, basically serve him. But if not, go ahead and follow the God that your fathers followed uh, 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 beyond the Jordan. Amen. He, he was letting them know then, hallelujah, not to be double-minded. You know, God done so much for Israel. They were his people. He, he chose them not because they were great in number, but because he had set his love upon them. They were the apple of his eye. Amen. They were the model. They were the model of, uh, 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 that was supposed to represent. Represent God, hallelujah, in the earth. They were the people, hallelujah, that God made every provision for. He kept them when they were in, in Egypt. He kept them when they were in the wilderness. He kept them even after they were disobedient and went into captivity. He still kept them. Amen. And so, and so now, hallelujah, they find themselves having this big confrontation and Elijah is there. Hallelujah. And he has confidence in God. Somebody writes, you got to have confidence in God. Uh, I don't preach this stuff and I don't teach this, this doctrine. I don't, I don't do that. I have confidence in it. I'm not just throwing it out there saying, yeah, uh, amen. Here it is. No, 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 no. I believe that there is one God. One faith and one baptism. I believe, hallelujah, that there is no other name given among men by what, what must we be saved? Amen. But at the name of Jesus, I believe that at the name of Jesus, and we hear all these folks, we hear the Muslims, we hear, and I'm not, I'm not doubting anybody. I'm not putting no, as the kids said, I'm not putting no shade on, on nobody. But when it comes down to it, I won't have to put no shade on it. Amen. Because the Bible has already declared that he, hallelujah, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, the one that thought it not robbery to be equal with God, who made of himself no reputation, but took on flesh uh, and took on the cross and, and took on death, amen, and rose on the third day with all power in his hand, amen, it's in the book, I don't have to put no shade on it, he is the only way to God, he is the only way that you can be baptized, it's got to be baptized in in his name. Anything shorter than that is not going to work. You can add whatever you want to add on to it. Amen. But I heard him say in the book of John, hey man, marvel not that you must be born again. You have to be baptized by the water and by the spirit. And if you're going to get baptized in the water, he said, yeah, I know. They taught that in, in over there in Matthews. Amen. At the end of Matthews, they taught uh, go out into ye all the 
world and teach the world. Yeah, I remember all of that. Amen. And, 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 and that's great. Amen. But God did not tell them to baptize in titles. God told them to baptize in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because if he told them to baptize in titles, I don't even know why I'm over here. If he told them to baptize in titles, then he would have came down and, and stopped them before they even baptized one soul in the name of Jesus. But the church, when it was birthed, hallelujah, on the day of Pentecost, when it had fully come and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, when they went out there and said, you men of Galilee, you men of Israel, all of you, all of you Jews, amen, hallelujah, all you that have gathered, hallelujah, you got to be baptized in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If the Lord if the Lord was able to grant Elijah the power to call fire from heaven, help me somebody, to call fire from heaven, hallelujah, to be a demonstration unto those false prophets, to let them know that God was real in the life of Elijah. How many of us, hallelujah, is God real in our lives? How many of us, hallelujah, have doubts when we go out and we see somebody that's afflicted and we, we, we're sitting here saying, can I lay my hands? on them. Will God, hallelujah, heal them? God won't do nothing till you move. God won't do anything until you extend your hand, until you come out of that mindset of fear and say, in the name of Jesus, be you delivered. In the name of Jesus, every curse be broken off your life. In the name of Jesus, your legs be straightened out and your feet be Oh, God, help me. I don't even want to go there. Amen. It's not till we move, hallelujah, that God moves, hallelujah, because he's got to move through us like he did with the disciples on the day that they went to prayer. I believe it was, it was, they went to prayer, hallelujah, and they found the man that was at the gate called Beautiful. You remember the story, the Bible says, hallelujah, that he was asking alms as they went into the, to the temple and they stopped and said, look on us, Amen. You got to stop and reason in yourself, hallelujah, and say, you know what? I got the Holy Ghost. I got the power. Time out for this old stuff talking about, well, you can't just lay hands on anybody. Listen, this man needs hands laid on him to be healed. He needs hands laid on him to be delivered. His eyes need to be open. How else are they going to be open if you don't lay your hands on him? The Bible has given us demonstration after demonstration. It has given us examples after examples. The Bible says that God, Jesus Christ, was working in them disciples as they went out and performed miracle signs and wonders. What happened to the miracle signs and wonders? I'll tell you what happened to the miracle signs and wonders. The church has settled for entertainment. That's what happened. And we don't want to stand flat-footed and tell the devil, devil, you a lie. Come out of that individual. Oh, Jesus, help us. Help us. We're double-minded. We want the blessings of God, just like they did in the Old Testament. We want the provisions of God. We want the protection of God. We testify all the time of what, 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 what we want from God. But what do you think God wants from you? Think about that. What, what do you think he wants from you? Why do you think he spared your life? Why do you think he healed your body? Why do you think he made a way out of no way when you were going down for the last time? Why do you think he guard, he put the blood over your house that, 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 that the people ran in the next house and killed everybody, but didn't kill everybody in your house? Why do you think he kept you in the car accident and you walked away without a scratch? It wasn't, it wasn't so that you can sit in Zion and and testify and sing your song on how good God is. He did that because somebody else needs to hear that, that need hope, that need encouragement, that need to know that God is real. Oh my God, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it at the, at the council. There was a young lady that came and I'm done. There was a young lady that came in and, and all we heard was her screaming and hollering, help, help, help. And it dawned on me that she was really screaming, help, 
And I ran out there and, and she was under spiritual attack. And we began to pray for her. Begin to calm her down. And I could see it. I said, Lord Jesus. And she began to tell us her story. There are so many stories out there, people of God, that we're missing. Because all we want to do is sit in the house of God and, and look good in our suits and, and praise God. And, and I'm not knocking that and entertain one another. I'm not knocking any of those things. It takes all of that for, for, for us as believers to, to stay strengthened. Um, but how much more if we were to go out into the highways, the hedges, and compel men to come in, that God's house might be filled. Um, James said it's time out. Um, it's time out for being double-minded. It's time out. It's time out for for not allowing God to use us to our full potential. It's prayer time. God bless you all. Thank you all for logging on, and I pray that something was said. I haven't taught Bible study in so long. <laughs> Amen. But I think that a sound mind can only come through sound doctrine. God bless you and keep you tonight. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. God bless your daughter.